Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Let's begin. These are the 17 SDG. The future we want is accomplished by the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as SDG. The goal that will be studied by this group is quality education, which is goal 4, and our title is The way quality of education affects economic growth. Moving on to members. Introducing our leader. This is Ahmed Amirul Azraim. Moving on. This is Putri Azatul Hanan. Next we have Muhammad Nabil Rukaini. And then we also have Muhammad bin Muslisha. Now to proceed with the last member, we have Muhammad Azwan. The Sustainable Development Goals appeal to all countries and intend to guarantee that no one is left behind. It is the starting point to create a better and more sustainable future. The 17 SDGs are embedded so that people can acknowledge that development must compromise sustainability in social, economic, and environmental terms. A necessary factor for development is education. Without significant investment in human capital, no country can attain sustainable economic development. Our research, the way quality of education impacts economic growth. This was specifically chosen to highlight the importance of having a higher education population in order to contribute to an economic growth. Our two SDG focus are SDG 17 and SDG 4, which talks about the quality of education and to ensure uh, that everyone is included in the same great opportunity. And for our problem statement, our main focus should be on how to figure out how to efficiently improve the quality of education and also the inclusivity of said education. As this has been said to improve our economy. There are three research questions. The first one is how does national investment in education provide long term economic growth? The second research question is what could be necessary improvement on quality and efficiency of education that would be a contributing factor to the academic growth? Lastly, what effort could the technical and vocational education tra and training develop, implement toward achieving a green economy. With the study of how quality of education affect the economic growth, it will allow the nation to see how it could improve its economy. The study will also show us the problems that are currently present within the current system therefore giving us a chance to improve the system by eliminating the problem or minimizing it. The study will also allow per capital income to increase, ultimately improving individual quality of life. High quality of education will increase people's productivity and effectiveness, while also encouraging entrepreneurship and technological advancement. With good quality of education, it is able to bring the poor out of poverty by increasing the value and productivity of the labor. Essentially, education is one of the most effective tools for reducing poverty and inequality. The act of learning of a nation's population has become a key element in deciding on how far the nation's economy will come. There are also significant gaps in literacy between developed countries as divided by income class. It is crucial to understand that there are several reasons why education seems to play a big role towards economic growth. According to Grant, education can also be described as a set of skills and other efforts on improving efficiency characteristics. A country's education or intellectual capital should be invested heavily if it wishes to see long-term economic growth 
without offering better education to its human capital, no country can attain long-term economic development. There are three ways by which education influences a country's economic viability as proposed by the World Economic Forum in 2016. Firstly, it raises the cumulative capacity of the workers towards conducting present operations in a better efficiency. Second, tertiary and secondary education tends to promote, in particular, the exchange of technical expertise based on new found information, products and goods, and technology invented by other profound individuals. Finally, through growing innovation, it strengthens a nation's ability to develop new ideas and insight, products and inventions. In a nutshell, economic development, wages and profits are all determined by education. Disregarding the economic component of education will jeopardize the development of sustainable upcoming generations with severe consequences for the sustainability of social security system, social exclusion and poverty. I will explain regarding TVAT's effort towards economic growth. TVAT is considered as a tool to increase efficiency, in which to say many countries have taken measures to reinforce policy guidelines and leg legislative mechanisms for TVAT as well as to develop partnership with the private sector and the employers. Since there is a clear association between the proportion of TVAT students at the post-secondary level, which is tertiary or non-degree, and per, per capita income. Sustainable growth comprises of three pillars which are economic, social, cultural, and environmental development. To integrate these three pillars, TVAT should adopt green technology that is economically viable and environmentally suitable. TVAT should also take the initiative by developing a workforce that, is, that supports green technology and in introducing regulatory or monitoring tools to evaluate sustainable practices. This concept could be incorporated into TVAT curricula and learning materials, as well as personified in schools, policies and activities. TVAT inst institution may serve as a source of inspiration for, for long-term growth. Next, I will explain regarding the room for improvement on quality and efficiency of education. Universities should provide students with knowledge that would benefit and enhance their life. However, there are several ways to improve the standard and sustainability of the education system. In terms of the first one, quality of components. The school authorities and teachers need to ensure that when improvement in the quality of components such as curriculum, policies and rules, evaluation procedures are implemented, they should prove to be beneficial to all parties and the quality should be superior and imminent. And the next one is uh, quality of academic literature and also the quality of on the formulation of rules and policies in which authorities formulate more responsive equitable policies and access to information and proactive transparency would help the individuals to promote high integrity standards and fair and efficient use of resources with the formulation of policies and rules individuals are also able to understand that they should deal with others with respect and courtesy and cope with all the problems and challenge in a well-organized manner. Thank you. To conclude, education is the backbone of every society because it creates intelligence required to live a dignified and respectful life. The standard education offered to children in school influences uh, a society's social norms and ethics. Any economic progress and growth are expressed in the quality of the education. Furthermore, seeing as how educated workers can more effectively carry out their jobs uh, that require literacy and critical thinking, a country's economy becomes more productive as the level of educated workers increases. Acquiring a high quality of education, on the other hand, comes at a cost, but without a decent quality of education, no economic growth is possible. A well-balanced educational system fosters not only economic growth but also competitiveness and increased per capita income. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.